The title of the paper presentation is Importance of Anatomical Asymmetries of Transverse Sinuses and MR Venographic Study. The cerebral magnetic resonance venography is used as a non-invasive means of evaluating the cranial venous system. This technique is particularly useful in the diagnosis of venous sinus thrombosis. Clinical and radiologic diagnosis of dual sinus thrombosis is sometimes difficult because of its variable anatomic structures and non-specific clinical presentation. Delayed diagnosis of sinus thrombosis may cause high may cause high rate of morbidity and mortality, whereas proper and prompt treatment, including the advanced catheterization technique, can improve the prognosis dramatically. The purpose of this study was to evaluate the normal anatomy of intracranial transverse sinuses and the asymmetries, such as unilateral hyperplasia and aplasia depicted by the MR venography. These variations can be sources of potential pitfalls in the diagnosis of venous sinus thrombosis. Using cerebral MR venography, we prospectively examined 105 patients, 60 men and 45 women, aged between 19 to 45 years, who had normal findings on MR examination from first June 2022 to 31st May 2023, patients with any intracranial abnormality were excluded from the study. MRI was performed by a 1.5 Tesla GE Signa creator. The imaging was done with a circularly polarized head coil. Conventional imaging consisting of actual T1 and T2 weighted images, actual T2 fair images, coronal T2 weighted images, sagittal T1 weighted images, diffusion and gradient sequences were carried out. Finally, MR venography of the brain was performed. The following time of flight, MR venography sequence was used with a TR of 28 milliseconds, TE of 9 milliseconds, with 60 degree flip angle and acquisition time of 8 minutes, with a field of view being 175 into 200 millimeters and a matrix being 256 into 128 pixels. All MR venography source images obtained were post processed using the maximum intensity projection method, generating 13 projection images over 180 degree. These images were then used to evaluate the presence, absence, and thickness of the dural transverse sinuses, the absence that is aplasia or the reduction in the caliber that is hypoplasia of one of the sinuses results in the dominance of the contralateral one. Subjects were divided into five groups as follows. Subjects within the first group had a flow gap on the right side, that is aplasia of the right sinus. Subjects within the second group had a slightly larger transverse sinus on the left than on the right side, that is hypoplasia of the right sinus. The third group had equal transverse sinuses on both sides, that is symmetric. The fourth group had a slightly larger transverse sinus on the right side than on the left side, that is hyperplasia of the left sinus. The fifth group had a flow gap on the left side, that is aplasia of the left sinus. For statistical evaluation, a hypothesis test for two proportions from each group was done using the MicroStar program. These are the top MR venography images of the transverse sinuses. Subjects within the first group were found to have aplastic right transverse sinus. Subjects in the second group were found to have hyperplastic right transverse sinus. Subjects in the third group were found to have bilateral symmetrical transverse sinuses. Subjects in the fourth group were found to have hyperplastic left transverse sinus. And subjects in the fifth group were found to have aplastic left transverse sinus. Of the cases, 20% had aplasia of the left sinus, 39% hyperplasia of the left sinus, 31% symmetrical sinuses, 6% hyperplasia of the right sinus, and 4% aplasia of the right sinus. That is to say, of the cases, 59% had a larger right transverse sinus and 9.5% had a larger left transverse sinus. Right and left flow gaps, that is, aplasia in the transverse sinuses of the brain, were observed in 24%, the right flow gap in 4%, and left flow gap in 20% of the cases. In the hypothesis test, for two proportions from all persons, the difference between the percentages of subject having right and left aplasia was statistically significant with a z-score of 5.54 and a p-value of 0. And the difference between the percentages of the subjects having the right or left hyperplasia was statistically significant. The Z score of 5.88 and a p value of less than 0.001. Dural venous sinus thrombosis is seen in a number of conditions, including infection, hypercoagulatory state, tumor invasion, and dehydration, which may be a cause of neurologic deterioration. Patients may have generalized or focal neurologic symptoms and signs such as headache, nausea, vomiting, and seizures. The signs and symptoms of cerebral venous thrombosis occasionally are non-specific. This, together with its numerous predisposing causes, makes the clinical diagnosis difficult and elusive. Imaging plays a key role in this diagnosis, which has traditionally been made during the venous phase of conventional catheter angiography, considered the standard. The diagnosis is difficult because of the non-specific clinical presentation. Digital subtraction angiography, that is DSA, once was the standard diagnostic standard for CVD, but is rarely used nowadays due to its invasive nature, which harbors a small risk for serious complications, including Neurologic complications, that is, neurologic signs or symptoms, or worsening of a pre existing neurologic deficit that occurred in the procedure or within the first 24 hours. DSA is reserved for exceptional cases, often when reperfusion therapy such as thrombosuction is considered. 
Cerebral venous thrombosis often presents with hemorrhagic infarction in areas atypical for arterial vascular distribution. MR venography in conjunction with conventional MR has replaced the conventional angiography in the diagnosis of during via sinus thrombosis. In current clinical practice, MRI combined with the time of flight MR venography has been introduced as a reliable non-invasive examination technique that is able to demonstrate both venous blood flow abnormalities and the interleukinia clot signals. While MRI findings are normal, the flow gaps imaging Dural sinus thrombosis due to congenital hyperplasia or aplasia of the transverse sinuses are seen in top MR venography. Unfortunately, congenital asymmetries of the transverse sinuses are not uncommon. Hacker in his study reported the prevalence of aplasia of 14% of the left and of 3.3% of the right transverse sinus. However, LZ et al. described transverse sinus flow gaps in 31% of patients with normal MRI findings. 90% of these were in the non-dominant transverse sinus and 10% in the poor dominant sinuses. None were seen in the dominant sinus. Intraordial angiography and MR venography present similar problems of differentiating between thrombotic occlusion and normal variants of the paired transfer sinuses. In particular, if dilated tortures, collateral veins as a sign of venous obstruction are absent. We have demonstrated that top MR venography can be reliable in showing that complete intracranial venous vasculature in a short time. In our series, the flow gap prevalence was 20% to the left and 4% with the right transfer sinus. The rates were higher than those of the study by Hacker, but lower than those of the study by Anzal et al. With top MR venography, in plane signal loss, in which the direction of the blood flow is within the imaging plane that mimics thrombosis, may occur. Thus, a review of the source data and conventional MRI brain scan are necessary. MRI also has a distinct advantage of being able to provide further anatomical and physiological information. Our MR venography observations indicated that anatomical variations seen in dural sinus must be taken into consideration when evaluating dual sinus thrombosis. Thank you. These are my references.